I'm here backstage at Alice in Copenhagen with none other than legendary vocalist Attila of bands such as Mayhem, Grave Temple, Sun and Tormentor. Attila, welcome. How are you? Thank you very much. Um, I'm fine. Uh, we are actually a little bit exhausted because I had I, I had some personal issues, you know, and today. So, but it's not luckily it's not much to do with the music. But my friend's daughter died. I just got this fucked up message. Also, you know, my other friend tried to commit suicide. So it's been a little bit hard. But that's nothing to do really with the tour or the music. It's just like sometimes, you know, life hits you like that, you know, like it's, it's, it is, it is what it is, you know. But apart from that, I'm fine and I'm really looking forward to the show tonight. And um, yeah, we are on this small tour with Hiedelem, with this new uh, band I have uh, with Balash Pandi together, who's a drummer, fusion, jazzy, metal drummer friend of mine who actually has been playing with Merzo, Merzbo and KG Hino. This is more, and also with, with uh, Thurston Moore and I don't know, a lot of big artists, you know, guys from Fate No More. He's like um, uh, more like this experimental artist. And this band is also like an experimental noise yeah. act, which actually uh, part of my life. I grown up uh, like like that in a way, you know, if I if you don't mind, I keep going on with this like uh, Um, when the eighties, you know, I started to play music, I, you know, hooked up on metal. Of course, that was the first thing hit me. Then I went into extreme, like a bit more extreme punk and like GBH exploited in the like 83, four. And then Venom came, you know, with a black metal changed my life <laughs> and went into extreme metal, started to play with Tormentor and with Tormentor, you know, back in the days, To cut it short, like, you know, back in the days, metal scene was different. We uh, we were very much in the periphery, on the edge of the metal. So actually the metal, mainstream metal community kind of didn't like us. <laughs> we only had bad reviews, you know, and shit. But but if you look at, like, I remember when a battery return came out. Yeah. I remember clearly in the German Metal Hammer, they had like two out of seven. Yeah. That was their review. So it's like, it was, I think, when the extreme metal came, it's needed some time to kick in you know and then um but here's the thing because of that uh not only metal people came to our show because uh of course because of these bad reviews <laughs> a lot of other people got interested like what is this mm. so this is how i hooked up with my friends um uh, who came from a different scene and they introduced me this type of music for instance they uh introduced me to bands like karen 93 Coil, Psychic TV, mm -hmm. you know, even like Death in June or or all this like Diamond the Galas, you know, like this kind of experimental noisy stuff. My favorite was Karen 93 from all of this, okay, but yeah. all the others I loved. So that really inspired me. The old stuff when they did this more noisy, dark noise kind of thing. But, you know, also the other bands were like pretty interesting and the industrial like Einstein and the Nybauten and and Test Department and like that was industrial before like the old stuff old school and also like electronics like Skinny Puppy Frontline Assembly Clinic like these bands were like part of my life even psychobilly bands like Meteors or Demented Argo or, or Medicine and stuff they were all part of my life and even though I was into extreme metal with Tormentor, I already listened to this kind of music. So for me, it's been always part of yeah. my, my, my thing, you know, and, uh, that's why I'm, I'm really enjoying to do this. And this band is a little bit referring on those years, you know, when it's one of those, uh, could be that one of those bands, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you know, what we are doing with Hiedelem and, and that's inspired me to do this stuff. And I'm really enjoying it actually. Um, It brings me back to those years somehow in in the spirit, you know. Yeah, and to go back to those years where you started with uh, Tormentor, you were only like uh, 14 or 15 years old, I think, when True. you started the band. Yeah, and was it because I was the youngest though? Yeah, okay. And it was because you listened to these punk bands, you got into this kind of music. Um, it was just a period for me, you know. I uh, I naturally just look for more and more extreme, so started with like basics like ACDC, Maiden. Uh, Judas Priest, you know, I still love these bands, of course, but 
but uh, punk and and like Dead Kennedys and GBH, they were like more extreme then. Yeah. It was that extreme metal didn't exist then really, or we didn't know. And then I got introduced to like Venom Slayer stuff like that, you know, and like move on like that and got into the more and more extreme stuff. Yeah. What is extremity to you? It's my nature. Uh, I've been always kind of like this trouble kid, but in an extreme way. Like, uh, like for instance, I had constant problems with my behavior in the school, but then again, I was a good student. I was good at, because my parents were like very German style, like military a little bit. So they didn't like at those. I'm a single. I didn't have brother or sister. So my dad really didn't like that my problems in the school and all these other things. But the deal was as long as I was good at school, they kind of like looked away. <laughs> and also you say like I started uh, when I was 15, but uh, that time I was almost the same size, same tall already, like today. I was like uh, high end sport, into high end sport. I was in a national team of uh, Hungary already, like uh, water polo team. Okay. So I was like hardcore into sport in yeah. those years. And when the music came in, uh, the f sport faded away, <laughs> of course. It and was the same my, with me. Yeah, and my, my parents didn't appreciate that too much. But then again, as long as I was okay with the school, it was fine. So mm. my life was always this kind of extremity. And uh, that's my nature, always, uh, you know, from one thing to another, I always put myself into challenging situations that's that that's natural for me mm -hmm. so uh i don't know i guess that's why that's why that's how it came you know and that's why you are in so many different projects playing so many different styles i mean uh i listened to your plasma pool not long oh, ago yeah? and i i really dig it i've been listening to it like thank for you two weeks straight oh that's amazing and i thought where did this come from um, yeah, it's like when I mentioned Skinny Puppy and stuff. So yeah. when we stopped with Tormentor in the 90, uh, I was like, I wanted to do something else. So we started Plasma Pool, you know, which was like pure electronic, but dealing with the same thing. Because like the only common thing in this music and bands and all this, what I listed before, that they were all dealing with the darkness, with the negative aspect. They were like, you know, underground dark bands and... And for me, that was always interesting. It could be even jazz or could be uh, classical, like Mussorgsky, you know, I like, because it was dealing with the evil stuff and that always uh, raised my attention. And today, I guess it's just, uh, that's how I am, you know. So so for me, um, for instance, to play only meta, like would be only mayhem, um, that would be, I wouldn't feel in balance with that. I need something else on the side uh somehow to to balance it out in 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 myself you know like that was sun before you know uh, so other bands you know now it's hiedelm you know i really like it uh, uh or plasma pool like there was a big change back in the days you know so so i guess uh, that's why and like i told you that's how i grown up and i guess that was my influences so that's how i became like this person. <laughs> yeah. So you you feel kind of naturally attracted to this this darkness, this abstract life. Yes. And in Tormentor, just to stay in that mm -hmm. lane, because yes. I think it's a very interesting period. Sure. You were known as sort of a trouble band. Oh, yeah. And known for having some crazy shows and people getting into fights and stuff. And I was just wondering, when you play in a band like that in, a, in an old Soviet nation like Hungary mm -hmm. was back then... Did you have any trouble with the authorities or uh, anything? Sometime, but you know, since we were not so political, or we had a song called Transylvania, that was a little bit tricky because, you know, that has a bit of relation to politics because, you know, it used to belong to Hungary, and now it's after the first war, it went to, uh, uh, it was uh, taken away, and now it's like belongs to Romania. but. That's a political issue, but we had nothing to do. Our our song about Transylvania was not about the politics. It was about, of course, Khan Dracula, Elizabeth Bathory, and all that stuff. But they, a little bit, was like, what is that? <laughs> but also, sometimes they came to the show, but, you know, nobody called the police because the police that time was trouble. You know, they in the communists, it's not like today, man. It's like they... 
they hit and then ask first. So if you're happy if they just beat you up and didn't take you, no reason. They could just come to you, you they didn't like your look, and they could just beat you. Mm -hmm. Seriously, and we, I, I run away many times from police, you know, yeah, and yeah, like, I can understand. shit like that, you know, so, so it was pretty different from today, and that was a thing, like, they didn't have that time this security thing, so that's why we had always these troubles on the shows, and people went crazy, and there's always these fights, especially in the beginning mm. of the band's career, when, uh, when, like, we got infamous of this thing like I told you and and a lot of people came just to fight. Okay, <laughs> like, really? Yeah. So like did, did you feel like you were in danger were you about to split the band some, because it was too much? Some time, but of course, you know, they liked us and I knew this, those people. As also I was very young, you know, they were older than me, so I was like this kid. Shit, okay, <laughs> you know, but all my bandmates were like two, three, four years older, which is yeah. in that, you know, it's very big difference if you are 15 or if you are 18, you know, that, that like, not today, it's like not big different if you are 45 or 48, mm -hmm. but when you are 15 or 18, that's a huge difference. So, so anyway, um, what happened is like, uh, it was always this fight, they burned, burned vinyls, clothes, you know, I, I mean, the first shows, I remember, like, I couldn't see the audience because it was always, like, these 10 people in the first row who were, like, fucking standing up <laughs> and, like, doing pogo. And if you wanted to come closer, you have to end it up with those guys first, fight uh -huh. yourself in. So I always saw these same dudes here. And then, like, after, like, 10 meters behind, I could see the rest of the people, you know, <laughs> in the venue. And uh, late, And actually... It's an interesting time and period because Tormentor, now I think about I, That time I didn't think because that time I thought big bands are Iron Maiden who are like filling up a stadium, you know, and I thought we were just nothing. But still, if I think back, you know, really soon, like even in like 88, we had like, I played like in this big venue, like 2,500 capacity, wow. you know, and it was not totally sold out, but no. we could easily drug like you know 700 people thousand and and up you know and then even more and we played in these big venues where now they closed down but i remember with mayhem it was hard to make it there <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. and like um uh so it was interesting time so i kind of grown up in this black metal high school and and uh, after when we got bigger crowd it's interestingly this this chaos went a bit down Somehow, as more people came, it was not so bad. But to to answer you, like if I felt in danger, for instance, let mm -hmm. me tell you a story. There was a show. It's like it's eighty seven ish. Okay. I was like sixteen, so I was like we went down. And it's like already people were there. It was like in this old Abaddon uh, kind of beer factories building, like typical shit. And I was like, okay, people are here. And there was a band who opened, which like you know, this was the age of disco. So there yeah. was a band, like this disco band, with this synth, and this girl was singing a little bit like, I don't know, modern talking style, but mm -hmm. with, with a girl, you know, like pick up a band from that year, or CC Catch or something, look like that, you know, like this Samantha Fox type, you know. <laughs> and then when I looked at that, I was like, holy shit. I remember we were looking at each other at the members, like, this gonna be hell. <laughs> like, these, guy, these guys, I don't know. <laughs> So, but you know what they played and everything, all the people were there, like you could see that they didn't like it at uh -huh. all, but it was kind of quiet. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And there was this other band, this old hard rock band from Hungary who also called Mis Missio, called Mission, Missio, Hungarian Missio, but nothing to do with the mission. It's like more like an old hard rock band. Okay. And they started to play and I was in the backstage, you know, waiting them to get off and then we are that was our turn and suddenly you know the the door was like exploded like bam open this guy guys came in like throwing the instrument like fuck and like bleeding i'm like looking like what the fuck one this guy's nose was bleeding fuck this shit fuck it fuck you guys i was like what <laughs> Turned out that that was too much. The people met, went on stage and beat the shit out of this band. They had to leave the stage. And then I was sitting there and you could hear like, door, man, door. <laughs> and the people were like banging on the stage, you know, like a lot of like, boom, boom, door, yeah. man, door. I was thinking like, fuck, this is going to be like interesting to go on stage <laughs> now, you know. 
So that was like, I remember that moment. I was like, holy shit. So I went on stage and the show was great. They yeah. loved it, <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> of course. But I mean... Uh, but it was, it was kind of spicy, so to say. Obviously. And when you had such a big crowd, such a big following, why didn't uh, Tormentor become a bigger band? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, I tell you what happened. We actually, we made a demo, uh, the Seven Day of Doom, which we recorded ourselves, like the cheapest shit you could find mm -hmm. in one night in a four-track studio. <laughs> you know, like you had to play everything at once. That's it. Mm. And then it started to get famous. And suddenly some guy approached us, or I think our drummer, Jolt Mahat, he phoned him because he was this big talking guy, like came from the punk scene, like very, very talkative. He, he I don't know where, the, in the night he phoned it somewhere in, in Budapest, this guy who was from this state company and ended up, we got a contract. Okay. And he was like, okay, you guys can make a record. Here is a deal. You can choose to pick up a studio. I was like, huh? So that was the first time I was in a studio. I couldn't believe it. Like, so this mixer, that's but big one, you know, 24 track, like the big tape machine looked like a, a big uh, furniture, you know, it's like, and, and with the synthesizers, I couldn't fucking believe my eyes, you uh -huh. know, and like, it's a microphone, like condensator. I went there and they grabbed it. They run in like, hey, stop, no. <laughs> You, you stay one meter away from that mic, man. It's, it's a fucking expensive shit. I was like, okay, sorry, you know. So there we recorded Anno Domini. And this is how Anno Domini album uh, got born, you know. And then, guess what? Uh, what happened? This guy, uh, we, we delivered the master. And I remember already it was a bit of delay with the payment and was fucking expensive. So I was thinking like, oops, what's going to happen now if they don't? We... <laughs> and it got paid. Suddenly the money came. I was like, uh -huh. fine, cool. So they paid it. And then uh, I would, it would be today like maybe six grand or 10 grand, you know, something like that, like a good production price. But for us as kids, it was a lot of money. So yeah. we were like a bit freaking out what's going to happen if it's not get paid. But it's not our business anyway. It got paid. And then guess what? The guy... <laughs> came to us like, he was like, yeah, yeah, the album is coming, it's coming, but I have a brilliant idea first, because this German band played here, like called Stormwitch, which is like a heavy metal band from Germany. And we it was a lot of people, we recorded this live album, we're gonna release that first, and then Tormentor comes. And we were like, okay, yeah, all right, well, I don't know, we don't, it's just fucking weird, but okay. Guess what, he failed with that shit. It really came out that Stormwitch album, but apparently it didn't sell. And he got fired from the company. And of course, uh, when they saw their mo the master, probably, I guess, they were like looking at like, this is the next fucking stupid idea of this guy. They just throw it in the litter, never got released. So we just had a tape from the studio, this old cassette. Yeah. So, so when we realized this, we started to copied because our fans were like really demanding like what the fuck is coming or the new like, because we told our friends you know and fans so we started to copy like a couple of guys like eh it's not gonna be released here you are and it started to spread of course so but actually I think that was the main reason we stopped like because the album didn't come out we didn't have any manager mm -hmm. I was like 17 the others were like maybe 19, 20, we didn't know shit what to do. Yeah. So, so then it was like, uh, we, we just stopped. We, we just started to, I don't know, not going rehearse. Also, I was tired of this, you know, and also metal, extreme metal, that age looked like, you know, if you look at the bands like Battery, that was cool. They turn, but also they turn into this Viking stuff yeah if you look at celtic frost they came out with the album called lake it was very strange for us if you look at destruction you know out from the the satanic style they went back to this more like this trash metal very shiny if you look at sodom you know they changed uh, destruction changed creator everybody changed so it looked like the whole scene was dead and this fucking glam metal and white metal and all this shit came in the same time. So we were very disappointed. Plus, uh, we had no one. We, we would need at least someone to tell us, hey, man, just keep going on. But 
we are just idiots. And then we just stopped. But I remember the last shows were like Pecha Sabat, Ter Balaj would tell. Yeah. It was the last, one of the last Tormentor show, if it's not the last. That's like fucking thousands of people, you know, like at outdoor stage. Mm. Three, four thousand, okay. <laughs> you know, and we were like, ah, fuck it. Seriously, like, it's, I don't know why, <laughs> you know, and that was, of course, kind of like a mistake. But I think what this thing happened, and then came the system change, everything just fucking changed. Mm. And also, you know, when you grow in that age, your personality changed. I was like, fuck it, you know, like, we didn't know shit. I wanted to do other music too. So, so it was kind of like a mistake, maybe. I would say now. Uh, it's it was, easier to see now, obviously, yeah, when but time has we are passed. Still but here, back so then, who knows, you know, yeah. what could be. But yeah. And, and then, then Mayhem came, of course. Uh, and yes, and that's what I was yeah. about to ask next, because then you were in Plasma Pool for a while, and then you received a letter or a call from yes, Euronymous, exactly. who has heard uh, your tape. I was in, we just stopped with Tormentor, and I already played the Plasma Pool. Like in ni We started in 90, 91 with Plasma Pool, and when I heard from uh, uh, Euronymous, I think that was maybe in end of 91, 92, yeah. Uh, I think very soon after that committed suicide, they contacted me. And actually, he phoned me via his contacts, like this fanzine. He was tape trading with a fanzine, this Hungarian fanzine. I uh, can't remember now the name, but Transylvania, something like... Whatever, I remember the guy, Tomás Vámosi, yeah. who reached me. He reached our kind of booking agent, who was just like a guy, not really a booking agent. And, but he, we didn't give our address. That was our official tormentor address, his address. So he got a letter and he approached me like, hey, there's a band from Norway and they would like to contact you. But you know what? First I look at it like mayhem. What the fuck? Because my name was mayhem. Oh, really? Yeah. In tormentor? Yes. Okay. We all had these stage names. Like I was mayhem, guitarist was bestial animal. <laughs> yeah. The bass player was George Carrion and the drummer was Von Belzebub, you know? So. That was our names. And when I when I heard about it, because Mayhem, first I thought it was a joke, like someone was joking, you know? But it was just the first thought. But then, of course, next thought was like, wow, what a coincidence, you know? Yeah. And then when I understood that is, of course, from Norway, and I started to learn a bit and heard about the band, it got, of course, interesting. Plus, I was, we were like, you said, like, from behind the Iron Curtain. So, you know, for me, it was a big deal that someone is approaching from like the West, from Norway to do something with them. So yeah, I got, and then I replied, I gave my address and started to change letters with Euronymous, which was like very, very cool actually. He was like a very sophisticated guy in the letters, all type written, no mistakes, very well composed, talking like a gentleman, really, really respectful way introduced himself. I still have the letter, like, he was, like, very happy to meet. He explained me how much they adored, like, Tormentor, and uh, that he wanted to invite me to join Mayhem, you know, and uh, for, for he explained me what happened, you know, with the walk with, with Dad, yeah. and that I, I should join them, and I was, was, like, of course, interested, just for the sake of it, just to see what's going on in the Western world with the music, of course. And he sent me vinyls and uh, T-shirts and shit. So and then like his fanzines and like the letters were like with this mayhem logo and all the shit. First, I remember look at the logo like what the fuck? It's like Venom. It's hard to read. <laughs> hard to read, you know. <laughs> first, I bought a Venom album. I couldn't read it. I first I thought it was Xenon. Oh yeah, yeah. I just yeah, yeah. bought it in the shop, the record store because it sounded fucking extreme. Yeah. I was like. Okay, I take it. Yeah, yeah. And then I understood it was Venom. So it was similar was it Mayhem, but even more, like more fucked up logo. And he sent me the Death Crush album, which didn't impress me that much, to be honest. It was like uh, cool, like, okay, it's cool, but it sounded very punky, and I felt like we were there already with Tormentor. Mm -hmm. But then he sent me a tape with the new stuff, you know, with the demos of the Mysterious, and that shit blow me away. Yeah. I was like, oops, that's another level. Now we, now we are talking. I was already interested, but now I'm very interested because the music just was something 
very new, very futuristic, very advanced. You know, I never heard drumming like that. However, I was already loved like Slayer and shit, but it sounded like twice fast, yeah. <laughs> you know, even then. It was unbelievable. I, and, and, and also, you know, the guitar playing the riffing, like this very fast riffing, but in the same time, it was very slow. Yeah. Like it's a pendulum in the music and in... Atmospheric, but yeah. still, still very extreme and yeah. fast, and with this, this nice melodies behind and shit, you know. So I was like completely into it, and then I got really interested. And of course, I learned about the band, which I thought that time it was very cool and interesting, like with this all shit around the church burnings and stuff. So I really wanted to see what it was, <laughs> you know, like. So I ended up, yeah, I ended up blues. there. What do you remember from uh, that time coming from Hungary to Norway? And what was your first impressions of the guys? Uh, my first impression was like they were very small. Small? <laughs> like I thought like In these like, big guys. Oh yeah, okay. So like small size, you know, at least Euronymous was like smaller and not so tall. But uh -huh. He was a super cool dude. You know, like they waited me at their uh, train station in Oslo. Uh, Varg was there. He was not too small. He was taller, of <laughs> course. So I'm just like joking. I mean, Euron because you know, Euronymous sounded like a big thing. Like Euronymous sounds like giant. And yeah. on the phone, he was like so cool, you know. And when I saw him, it's you. Okay, cool. But you know, I don't care. It's fine. It was fucking great. But you know, he, they were like all in these bullet belts and shit. Varg was wearing this metal chain on the uh, like, you know what. You got like a, like like a middle age, mithril like west the, in Lord yeah, of the Rings kind the, the, of a, the Lord a of Viking, the Rings, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you you know like yeah. uh, like an armor, armor, armor piece, yeah. armor, and he had a knife on him and all the shit, and they were like. Yeah, these days you have to be careful. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> you because know. of you, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and they were waiting like that, you know. On the, on the, on the, he on came the, in on that the when they, they picked you up. They came like that when they Whoa. picked me up at the at the, at the platform you know, on the train <laughs> station. I was like, wow, cool. And then we jump in the car and like, and uh, Varg was driving this Volkswagen Golf or something, and he put on this techno music. I was like, fuck yeah, okay. because I just came from the. You know, I had plasma pool, and actually, the cool thing with Varg was like, uh, like he was totally into plasma pool. He wanted to release that, you know. So I was like very, very happy to hear that. You know, like I got the label, man. Like, yeah, let me. I was like, sure, man. Let me talk about this later. You know, yeah. but when that's not the first night. I'm talking about later when we started to talk. You know, like uh -huh. the first night we just went there and uh, to Euronymous place. Varg was there too. We all stayed at his place. And I was really, really impressed because then I realized that, holy shit, this is much more fucked up and serious than I thought before. They, there was like hundreds of magazines talking about these church burnings because Aeronyms collected all this press. Mm. So he showed me, look at this, look at this, look at this. I was like, oops, all right. This daily papers, magazines, all this shit about them, you know. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so that was your impression. That it was a cool thing. You weren't scared of it. You weren't trying to get away no, from it. No, it wasn't too much. It was on the edge. It was almost scary, almost. But you yeah. know, that time I was so much into already had these really dark experiments, like with drugs. I was totally into occultism, but not, you know, drugs were not available at that time. So in Hungary, so I got sometimes some something like weed or or even like some acid. Very, very rare, really hard to get, but that was not a party time for me. That was a magic time, you know, that was my going to the underworld. So I remember I just took, I was into hi-fi from my childhood, so I had this always this good stereo. Yeah. So that I spent all my savings, everything on stereo and music, you know. So I was just taking this acid at home where my parents were out, just locked the door, you know, put on the music and just fucking going down to hell. And I just loved it, you know, like totally. And also reading, you know, it's like that time you couldn't find, was no internet, you couldn't find so much information. So I had like books about demonology and stuff like that. I was reading all the time that and witchcraft and stuff. So, but uh, for me, these experiments were like really, really hard. And I felt like I was very well equipped <laughs> so yeah. to say I, I you you couldn't freak me out very easy you know that time and it's the same with mayhem so it was 
intense, but couldn't, I, I, I didn't get afraid, but I was really impressed mm -hmm. for sure. Like, fuck, this is like much more crazy than I thought actually. Yeah. But it was still about the music and I couldn't wait to see Hellhammer, how the fuck he's gonna pull out this drumming <laughs> because I couldn't believe it was real. And then we had this first rehearsal. It was amazing to see that like, or hear it like, yeah, that's what it is. You know. So did you know already at the time that uh, when you recorded The Mysterious that there was going to be a big thing? There was already the church burnings, there were already the magazines talking about them. And if you say the music was like none other than you've ever heard before, did you already think back then that this could be huge, this could uh, be you changing? Know, not really, because the scene was so small. Nothing like today. That's, this this thing didn't exist. You know, this underground scene was like I never heard about. I didn't know that there is a new wave of this black metal. You know, I never heard before about Dark Throne or stuff. I was really impressed in these bands. You know, like it's coming, but it still looked like it was still in the egg. You know, it was still in the seed. So I couldn't see it, but they told me that everybody is waiting for this record and it's been like years already they've been working on it so of course in the scene which i didn't know that much that time it was already like uh, kind of like ex uh, uh, expected you know and people were waiting for it and they i felt it's gonna be a great record of course and i thought it was fucking in cool you know like uh, the music and all the stuff and finally I felt like shit finally I have a serious band now and finally because that time it was a big deal to have an, a vinyl out or a label it's not like today man it's like it was only these big labels or not or I, I, I don't know but for me it was like fuck finally at, I have a vinyl out that was a very big deal for me so I couldn't, and I felt like it's professional, you know, they have good gears, like Gibson guitars and shit, which I just seen videos, you know, like Judas yeah. Priest video, I saw Gibson guitar, because it's for us, it was like almost unreachable, you know, you didn't think about that, <laughs> you know, yeah. we were so poor and back in the days in the communist shit. So, so it was very promising, but I would not, of course, no one could foresee this, yeah. what happened. And I just thought it's gonna be a great record, and I hope, like Euronymous talked about, which that time sounded a little bit spaced out, Grande was plans, like he said, yeah, and this album is gonna come out like this, this, and then we start a tour, and he wanted to do the first show in Hammersmith, so they on, like, the seven dates of hell, Venom, because he yeah. was completely into Venom, so that was like, that's the plan, we're gonna start the tour there. I was like, tombs up, fuck yeah, let's do it, let's see, you know. Yeah. But I didn't, I, it was kind of like very surrealistic to think about that. But, you know, the, so it was nothing like today. There were no metal festivals like today, nothing, you know. I don't know. I never seen extreme metal bands even they didn't come to Hungary, you know, like from abroad. I saw Necronomic. We played with Necronomicon, though, mm -hmm. with Tormentor, but that's not so big, you know. We never seen like Slayer, never came or... Or, or something like, which I fucking love Slayer, you know. Um, I wish I could see them or even didn't know about that metal, you know. Probably if I hear about Morbid Angel and shit, because for us that metal was like Celtic Frost. That yeah. was called that metal actually back in the days. So that metal in the beginning was this slow, doomy stuff. At least to me, the definitions were not so solid. And I think after Possessed came with the death metal like seven churches, there was a grand, groundbreaking, completely blow us away, you know. And then, but still, if I hear Morbid Angel, probably I start to play death metal myself <laughs> too, maybe, you know. And I, it's just like funny. But uh, all in all, it was, uh, you, you can see it and, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope it's going to be great, of course. And Obviously. But it, it wasn't just uh, the music that was new. And the, all the church burnings and the sensations around the band and around this album, your vocals especially was also kind of groundbreaking. I haven't heard like a black metal vocalist sing like that before. The mysterious, you have this ability to go like extremely low and very high pitch in like what seems like little to no effort 
to you. Mm. Especially in plasma pool, you can really, really hear it. Thank you. Um, uh, is the, uh, you already answered the question, you know, <laughs> because I already use this style in plasma pool and like yeah. I love like bands like Leibach and shit. So I thought like, fuck, we could try this kind of thing. Why should I scream? like I did it with Tormentor or like Dad did, because I was thinking about Dad. Dad apparently loved Tormentor, you know? So that's why I got invited to the band. But I was thinking about him, like what he would like. I don't think he want me to copy him, you know? No. I, I mean, I, and also myself, I didn't want to fucking do it again, the same shit. So when we were in the studio, uh, we, we did a couple of like takes, you know, like try out shit. And then I started to do this this more deep voice. I was like, I could do this too. And you know, they were all like, fuck yeah. Especially Euronymous, yeah, do that. So at the end, I started to almost all the songs I sang. And then I remember that the, we, we came to the uh, Buried by Time and Dust that was like recorded on the third day. And I remember like also with Hellhammer and we talked about like, maybe now you could do a bit more Tormentor style. Now we have enough of that <laughs> other shit, you know? I was like, sure. Oh, okay. Um, but the, it was not just my, I could scream the whole album, like the black metal style, but, but since the guys were all inspiring me and also everybody was there in the studio. It's not like, well, today it's not, but what is happening normally, I mean, uh, with someone, with a composer or stuff, you know, but that time it was so interesting and I miss it sometimes. Like you could see how much everybody was into it, even Snorre. Everybody was there when we did the vocal. Everybody had an input, had something to say. Even Hellhammer was there. Everybody was there. And they all said, yeah, it's cool, yeah, it's cool, do this or that. Hellhammer, something, like the buried, for instance, he had to come in the, in the dark room because I had this completely black, black room, like peach black, with a couple of candles. And I told the guys, like, I want curtain on the window of the, so you guys can't see me. So I, and I had a hand mic so I could fucking just move around and do what the fuck I wanted when I was de doing the recording. And for the buried by time and dust, even Hellhammer had to come because I couldn't fucking memorize some rhythmic parts. For that time it was so extreme for me so I couldn't count it in the right way. So he came into the, the dark room and he was showing me like, you know, showing me the ones like tick, 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 tick. So I could just listen and he just gave me like sign poles now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, what I want to say it's about like, uh, okay, I came with this idea to do this different type of vocal to make it unique. I just thought, I always like to do new stuff anyway. I enjoy that. I don't like to do, repeat myself really. So, but they were all like thumbs up, you know, they were all happy with it, everybody. Yeah. So that's why it became like that. And it went out pretty good. Mm. You must say it's the most legendary black metal album. People say, I think so as well. And it really changed the genre. It changed the history of black metal uh, and metal in, in any sense. Actually. Thank you. Well, I heard after, which I was not too surprised, <laughs> that first people were like kind of freaking out. Like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. Because, of course, obviously, Mayhem fans, uh, like I talked to Grittel sometimes and some of my other, like from Enslaved or or... I don't know uh, about, you know, all the way from, from Immortal and yeah, stuff. Yeah. They were totally into it and they told me, they told me the story that first they, heard, they were look, really looking forward the time, you know, like what is going to be fucked, the mysterious came out and they heard it and everybody was like, huh? What the fuck is this, you know? And they, like Grittel told me like, first it was so strange what we listened another time and another and just suddenly hit them like, fuck. This is like evil shit, finally, you know, and they, and of course, Euronymous was so, super happy, they told me. He was like telling like, hey, listen, it's like a priest, and it's like everybody freaked out at the end, you know, so it's like, but like, I think that shows it's normal. Everything, when it's new, first it hits you, you need a bit of time to get into it, and then it's gonna grow on you, and then it can be, the, actually, my, uh, experience or in those years I re really when I look for this more and more extreme music like for instance when Possessed came out I was like shit this is too much but it was two guitars and stuff I was like fucking hell it's like I had to give a more listen and just ho hooked and I just completely hooked so when it was like a little bit difficult to get into mm -hmm. 
kind of music, those were the best ones. Yeah. You know, they became like big influence, like they grown on me. And I, maybe it was similar to these guys, you know, I just needed a couple of listen and they hooked up totally. And uh, of course it was evil because I was fucking into it, you know, like with this thought, like there is this movie out, you know, but the scene is wrong. That's like the rehearsal. That's the rehearsal. The, the Lords of Chaos movies yeah, you're talking about. That's wrong, the scene. It, which, it's which, beautiful. Uh, scene? Uh, the, re the vocal recording. With you? With me, with oh, my son. son. With son, my yeah. son, it's beautiful that he is in there. Probably that's the best part of the movie to me, <laughs> or the best thing about it, so to say. But that's another thing, like how that happened. But anyway, uh, the cool thing was like he, like, uh, um, what I was going to say, fuck. But, uh, in the scene, you're all playing together, but in a, in a, in a room with lights on. Is yeah, that, yeah, is in the, you... yeah, like in the movie, that is wrong. And yeah. I told after the, the director and he was like, fuck, why didn't you tell me? I was like, come on, man, shit. Did he ask? But I mean... no, we didn't, we didn't want to cooperate, you know. We, we had to, we separated ourselves. But uh, a little bit regret, at least I could tell him like, hey man, this is like, but I was not home. I was on tour when it happened. Actually, to jump in there quickly, like what happened, I was in the South American tour and uh, and uh, I came home. I We heard about this movie already, of course, but I came home and like someone from the family calls me, hey, guess what, your son's gonna play you. I'm like, huh? <laughs> what the fuck? And it turned out, turned out that uh, it, it turned out that uh, they shoot the movie in Hungary but by coincidence by coincidence okay. big part because Hungary have this big uh, movie industry you know they shoot a lot of movies there and actually my family is from the movie industry my ex is working for movies she's all the assistant she's been an assistant of these top guys like from Brad Pitt to Robert Red, I don't know like Bruce Willis, they always call her, <laughs> you know, for the stars, like now it was Will Smith, it's always okay. like, but also my son, uh, he he was into, also my, his grandfather is like uh, one of the most known cartoon director in Hungary. So we have this movie, film, uh, family background, and my son wanted to be an actor first, and then he, now he's, and he turned to director, so he's more into directing, but his name was in this uh, catalog, in this, in this uh, agency, oh. you know, listed with the, yeah. like, a, and they were looking for, when they came to Hungary, they looked for, of course, like uh, other artists, uh, other actors, you know, for the scenes and shit, like, you know, for, for like props or I don't know how you call it, like, you know, like the smaller actors in the movie, like not the main like, actors. Like uh, extras? Uh, yeah. Exactly, and stuff, and actors too. Yeah. So they phoned him, like his name, and uh, just Jonas told me, like, how this happened, like, hey, wait a minute, what is this? His name is like my name. Who yeah. is this guy? Turned out it was my son. Turns out he was exactly the same age as me was. Uh, like, he was 21. Okay, I was 22. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter, you know. But anyway, it's like they ask him. And of course, then I came home, and then you know, and then and he called me, Jonas. He was cool, like, hey, please, please let him do it, <laughs> please. I was like, sure, I'm not gonna fucking turn this down now. You know, you guys already told him. Of course, I mean, also it's cool that why not? He's gonna play me. But mm -hmm. that's the story. It was not planned at all. It was just like this kind of weird coincidence. Yeah, that... it's kind of like fate or something. It's yeah. very, very weird. Very weird. And, and speaking about this movie, did, did you like it at all? Do you think it was <laughs> too fictional, too Hollywoodized? Uh, honestly, not really, because um, because I'm a bit worried that people will remember for us like that. You know, maybe in 50 years, some kids watching this movie and they will think that we are that kind of people. Well, I think it was... Uh, Good intention, but it was a very complicated shit, you know, with this movie. We didn't, we, we didn't like it. We didn't like the idea first to have this movie because, like, for instance, all these conversations you hear the movie, it's all made up. It's never happened. Nobody, you know, all this, it's like it's not based on us. It's like it's just someone wrote it. 
and uh, like all these scenes never been like that really some parts yes it does something to do it has something to do with the the story what happened of course it's based on that but for let me tell you like it starts a movie with this party thing like everybody is drunk and fucked up and fucking mm -hmm. chicks and mm -hmm. stuff i tell you what i came to norway i was struggling for a fucking beer these guys were total straight edge. I was like, what the fuck is going on, guys? Can I have a fucking beer? And like, maybe I had one the whole trip, you know, or we, we never went out. We went out one time, you know, in this bar, I don't know where in Oslo. And I had like, no one was drinking. No one was doing anything. Actually, I had to struggle for like, can you get me a piece of hash? Just like something to smoke because that was my first experiment with drugs. And I thought maybe it's available because in Hungary, it was still so fucking hard to set. So I was like, please get me a fucking hash. I want to try it. But, you know, I even came with the bullshit like, yeah, it's much better for my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, they got me a small piece, you know. So that's how it was, you know. So it's just an example. It's like not really representing. And also like these conversations, like man, with Euronymous it was, and also Varg, like so sophisticated. They, they speak so beautiful English. I, I hardly, you know, my English was shit that time. And it was like, Varg was reading already, talking in English. I was like, wow, you know, like, it was like, um, Euronymous too, like they were like really, really cool and like uh, very, looked like very serious and smart mm. and really, and it was more all about the music. Even I can tell you, it's the, relatively it's the end period before the murder, because I was in May, I think the murder happened in August something, and this recording was around end of May when I yeah. was there. Man, I, I tell you, it was no bullshit. Nobody want, talked about killing anyone. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. It was just like a little bit of like, eh, I could hear like, yeah, that guy's a bit strange, acting a bit, what do you think, you know? But they asked me, oh, oh fuck. Oh yeah, it's, the yeah. band is starting. But um, should we wrap it up then? Because we could be- Okay, cut it and we do it after the rest. Okay, let's do that. Sure. Be right back. So Attila, you just came down the stage now after performing with Achillem. How do you think it went? No, it was great and uh, really uh, enjoyed. I think it was maybe our it's a it's a new new band, new project. I think maybe it was our sixth show, seventh show. Um, I really like the audience. Like a lot of people showed up. It was fucking amazing, and they all had like an attention. That was great, and I think Balash played really fucking good tonight. You know, the drummer, uh, my my pal in the band. And I was happy, and uh, it was a great show. Uh, I had this new instrument, which, which I had just for a couple of days, actually, like for a week. So it was a bit challenging, but uh, I like it, I think. And uh, yeah, all in all, I'm very happy. It's cool. Yeah. And I experienced it myself, and um, I was very immersed in this show, because I, I went in with an open mind. I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And after like just five minutes, you were like completely into it. Like I went into not not a trance, but I was very very immersed. But what about you when you're on stage? You have to improvise. What, what goes through your mind? That's the same. I want to be in trance, and I want to get into this state of mind, which is uh, actually not easy at all, especially when I have to control all this uh, technical stuff because everything we play is live, nothing is pre-programmed or pre-recorded. So it's like uh, kind of challenging to to play it. So of course it's a lot of improvisation, but we have a structure in this band. But it's like a noise. It's a noise noisy project. It's like. Uh, gold noise band <laughs> i don't know how to call it platinum noise um it's like um uh pretty amazing feeling and but in the same time you know like it was a new since it i, I used this new instrument i really had to focus and even like i realized that in the beginning like one of the mic was a little bit acting weird so that actually took away the the very best part of it for me because I like when every I, I'm more relaxed when everything is working perfectly and everything has to be perfect <laughs> you know so that was a little bit a little bit spicy but this is the the, the the challenge of playing live you know like it's never easy it's never 
anything can happen anytime. So I had a slightly little bit of this technical issue. So I would say I was on 90, 95%. Oh, well, Still, it's okay. That's pretty, that's yeah. pretty high, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me just say that I was out there myself, and I didn't notice anything. Like, I didn't notice that one of your mics didn't work properly. And, you know, none of us know the music mm. beforehand, and you don't either. Mm. But I was talking to people afterwards, uh, and they were all, like, positively surprised. Yeah, it was not the major thing, and I'm glad you couldn't recognize too much of this. And even I... You know, basically, it was a mic just just was working on one side, so I was then I I just switched to the other mic because normally I use two mics. But actually, the sound guy told me it was really good because it was like panning, like this one mic was on one side, and then while I started to play, it was on the other side. So it was like a cool intro. So actually, eventually, it turned out okay up from outside, but it was a little bit annoying to me. But then again, I'm used to this. It's all the time there is these challenges. Like I said, it's like always something. That's the beauty of playing live music, you know. Yeah. 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 You never know what's going to happen. No. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because this is a very um, different sort of experimental genre. I would call it sort of a black avant-garde, free jazz kind of mm -hmm. music. And nice. What What do you uh, get out of it personally playing this instead of playing in Mayhem or Tormentor, for example? Well, it's like we talked about earlier, you know, all this music and influences, and it's just for me like that. I respect them. I'm very much into experimental and this noise music, and you you actually got it pretty well because uh, Balaj is like a fusion jazz jazz drummer, basically. And uh, the improvisation is also, I think, coming mostly from the jazz scene originally. So it has something in a very weird or abstract way, it has something to do with jazz for sure. Um, I don't know, it was great, you know, and uh, I like, I, I really need these kind of things, like I told you. May I tell you something about uh, my next thing? Of course, of course. Uh, that's gonna be really fucking interesting, I think. It's one of the most uh, challenging and exciting thing maybe ever I did. It's gonna be with a full orchestra. Interesting. Uh, I have, I got introduced, you know, um, through the years I met so many people. I, I met uh, and be, be, became very good friends with Ilan Volkov, who is like a very high-end conductor. He used to conduct, uh, I think he still does probably, but he, he was like the conductor of the Royal Philharmonics of Scotland. And uh, he introduced me to this composer called Bernard Gander from Austria, who is into extreme metal too and stuff, but he is a classical composer and he invited me for this piece so it's been a long project now he's been writing the music for more than a year now because it's a big composition but don't think about like you know bands like well whatever demo or or cradle of field or yeah. you know like you have some metal song and then you just put some class some classical or orchestra on the top no it's the other way around it's it's just pure orchestra no fucking metal in that sense, but it's coming from there. But the people it will be like a fool. I can show you a picture, like 40 piece of orchestra, like uh -huh. a huge one. I'm gonna be the only singer. Oh, really? <laughs> and it's a one hour piece. And uh, there's gonna be also Flo Morian, uh, Monier, sorry. From uh, Cryptopsy yes. and uh, he's gonna play, Yes, he's yeah. gonna play the drums. He's a fucking amazing drummer. Yeah, he is. So we're gonna be two metal heads, but he's gonna play behind the glass thing, you know, yeah. the drums. Like, because it's like an orchestra piece, you know, and it's like acoustic stuff, like with all the shit, you know, like with tubular bells, uh, timponies, uh, giant gongs, you know, I saw the setup, like, it's gonna be, of course, the strings, the blows, you know, all the stuff, you know, like, it's huge shit. I'm so excited, man, and I don't know how the fuck I will pull this out. I just <laughs> talked to Flo these days, like, Hey man, can you read the notes? It's like, yeah, I can, and uh, but still, and I will have a, probably a click, but still, it's like fucking, I don't know, and I'm like, yeah, okay, so what do you think? I don't know either because I even can't read that fucking shit, you know. So because the thing like like it's so complex, you can't imagine. Like you know, it's like 
so many stuff happening, so I'm just looking forward. How will I memorize all this shit? Uh-huh. It's gonna, it's gonna kill me. But still, it's I can't resist. It's so, uh, so beautiful. It's like a child dream come true. One of at least like to play with the full orchestra, and we already have two shows booked. One is the 6th of March in Frankfurt with the Frankfurt Orchestra, of course. Okay. And there is one, uh, I think it's 20th of May uh, in Vienna with the Vienna Orchestra. So I like that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the next level. A pretty big project. That's fucking big project. That's one of my child dream. Like, like I had another one to play in a fucking church organ. And I did it once. We had a sun show in Bergen. And imagine, like, to play in a church in Bergen where, you know, all this church burning started. So they had to hide my name. They didn't say my name <laughs> that I'm going to perform. They booked in this called Domkirke, which is like a big church, a big, big church, in, yeah. like a cathedral almost in uh, Bergen. And, man, that has, like, the third biggest organ in Scandinavia. And I was there. We were, like, people were loading. And you know what happened? Like, of course, the, the, the church, they didn't want us at all, even without. They didn't know I was, was going to be there. But even without me, they didn't want us. But there was the cantor, who was a fucking cool dude. And he was like, he, he made the whole thing happen. He pushed the priest and all the priesthood like, yeah, yeah, just it's going to be fine. We have to open for the youth, you know, get them to the church, all this shit. Like, and... I arrived to the ven. I arrived to the venue, which is like the cathedral. I went up and I saw him like, oh yeah, and I just leave this on, guys, and yeah, take care, enjoy it. And I was like, what? This organ? Can I? Can I try? I was like, sure, man, just do it. And by the guys were loading, man, I was playing on this organ. I can't tell you what that feeling, like this fucking like ten meter high pipe, you know. I was like, yeah. all this keyboards you know like i can't really play but it doesn't matter you know it was such a or mm. i had an orgasm <laughs> almost you know so what is your stage performance gonna be is it gonna be like uh, in mayhem where you are gonna dress up as a character uh, i don't know yet well we talked about it uh, yeah he told me i could wear makeup i was like okay also like i might have a podium like a priest so i can go up there i'm not sure but it's more like It's not an opera, it's more like an orchestra concert, you know. Okay. Like a, amazing venues, of course. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. I, I read in an early interview you had a dream about making a, a black metal opera. Is that still a dream of yours? Mm. Or is this the closest thing you're going to get to that? You think? I would like to. I had like this, the three... The three terrors. The three terrors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I talked to Abbott with this. Like, it could be one of the terror. Oh, yeah. I could be the other. And I who else was I was thinking? Oh, I don't know. There was one more guy. Like, I can't recall now. But I had this idea, the three terrors. Man, I have so many ideas. But, uh, yeah, something left to do, probably. Do the black metal opera. Uh, we will see. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of good ideas, we were talking uh, during the break about some of your your most memorable performances during your uh, career. Mm. Uh, can you mention some of them for uh, for the listeners? Oh well, um, you know, of course, like I used a lot of different costumes and stuff. But I think the one of the more insane and fucked up stuff what was happening on the Ordo at Keo tour with Mayhem, you know, when I had every night a different costume. And of course, there is the infamous, uh, like, Easter bunny, when I went on stage in a bunny costume, like, that got really, really inf- infamous. And I, I was interested, like, it was interesting to see that hit through, you know, that came out next day, it was all around, you know, I was like, okay, I made it. <laughs> People were so fucking pissed off. I went up with these carrots, you know, this basket of carrots and like, and like playing like, it was of course at Easter time. That's why it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had uh, like the dictator in uh, Moscow. We just talked about or mentioned about it's like, um, I, I I dressed like the, actually was inspired by Charlie Chaplin's movie, The Dictator, you know? Yeah. But I had the same mustache and all the shit, you know, was fucking crazy. Man, I mean, you should search. I had the globe, of course, and I destroyed the globe at, at the end of the show. Um, I was like, 
uh, the mummy, you know, in a hole in the sky. We just took the boat and I had this uh, Headbangers Ball interview on stage and the mummy was having a tea and reading newspaper and answering the questions between songs. And uh, it took like at least like five minutes and the audience completely got upset. They started to yell, but not to me, but the guy in Norwegian. I even didn't recognize. Mm -hmm. And they started to treat him like, we're gonna fucking kill you, get the fuck out of there, what the fuck is going on? But I didn't understand that, you know, and it was supposed to be like two pieces of the interview, like between two songs. First, we had this question and answer thing, and then I was supposed to come back for the next round, and my answer was supposed to be like, time to die, you know, and we played a song. So basically that song is the answer, but the guy didn't show up. And I went backstage after the show and I said, hey, where the fuck you were? Why didn't you come back to do the sec second run? He was like, man, I couldn't have a fucking, I, I need an escort out of here. I'm freaking out. People are going to kill me. I'm like, what? What's the problem? Uh, or, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like so much shit. Uh, yeah, I was a slave trader in Holland. And uh, I got this black dude, this, uh, like I was in the afternoon, Actually, I had a guy who was supposed to come, but he couldn't make it. So I was, and I really wanted to do this. I had the slave costume. I had my costume. The slave trader looked like a, a captain of a ship, you know, because actually Holland was a big slave trader country. So I thought to play around with that shit. And, uh, and I phoned in the afternoon. I asked the promoter, hey, do you know anything like, like any of this art, art, like artist here, like uh, maybe like uh, art, scene or project or dancers or actors, you know, so I, I digged out, we digged into this and they found this black dude, you know, was like an actor. I explained to him like, I'm actually, I'm anti-racist. So I told him it's not, it's nothing about that. It's more about like to show man, show people how fucked up our, our mankind is and uh, like human itself and like what the fuck is going on. But anyway, <laughs> I got him on chain, you know, and I brought him on the stage. It was fucking insane, you know, and in between the songs, I was like, how much your life worth? And people were like, you know, like it was like an auction and <laughs> for the slave. And then I liberated the slave at the end of the show. The black dude was fucking cool and he was playing, you know, like he was resisting and I had him on chain, you know, like all this shit. And then I don't know, I was a pimp once, uh, like that was in Finland, like they told me like, hey, do you want this? We have these cage dancer girls. And I was like, no, nah. but wait a minute, dancer girls? Okay. So we did not cage dancing, but I had these two beautiful chicks, you know, with me on stage. I had a sofa and a table and I got this fake, I don't know, like salt. And I had this cowboy hat and all like, because they had this fucking... This club was like, I don't know, they had these sex events there or something. So I dressed up like a pimp. Mm -hmm. And in between the songs, I was chopping like cocaine. But it was, of course, just like sugar on the stage, you know, like. Ch -ch -ch. <sighs> ah, next song, what's going to be, baby? And shit like that, you know. <laughs> or I was, fuck, I don't know. It's so trash metal. I was this trash, trash can man, you know, in London. And I was starting the show. I read London, are you ready for trash metal? Nobody fucking got it. I was surprised. <laughs> like I thought the people were more open-minded at that time. Anyway, it was crazy. And we were all working this out with Bless Humor. <laughs> um, he was very supportive with this. And I think it was like fucking pure gold, actually. <laughs> many, many stuff, man. Many shows. What else I could pick you up? Like, uh, I was De Gaulle in Paris. I was French chef, you know, cooking the the globe. I was Christmas tree, you know, when it was close to Christmas. I was, I was crucified, you know, on the Easter. I was singing from the cross, you know, and bleeding as fuck. I don't know. That's all this shit, man. So yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. Yeah, but... Quite a lot of good it's, ideas. It's even more. Is, yeah, there, even is more. there anything you wouldn't do? Is there anything where you cut the line where you say, no, I cannot do that? But I mean, if you say you've been dressed up as Hitler. I wouldn't do anything relating to politics. I wouldn't do anything relating to racism or something. And yeah, apart from that, I don't know. 
Um, pretty much open. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't hurt. An, like I wouldn't it. hurt any animal on stage. Um, I really respect nature and animals. I would hurt people, but it, we didn't get there. However, I had this guy who told me like he's like this body artist, and he wanted to come. Like you know, I could fucking do whatever I wanted with him because he's like this. We can resist the pain. He told me I could hook him up. You know, like li- or. Uh, I don't know, caught him or whatever, but it didn't happen. It's, it's a guy from Israel, actually. I, I haven't heard from him for a long time. I hope still okay. But you, is it crazy? Like he's doing fucking crazy shit, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, what I wouldn't do, I wouldn't. Ah, fuck, I don't know. Probably <laughs> there's a couple of things I wouldn't do. <laughs> All right. Well, we've spent a lot of time talking to uh, to each other today, and I really appreciate it. Uh, just have one final question: What's what's going on in the future for uh, both you and Mayhem? You told about this uh, uh, symphonic show, but what else? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, Mayhem is my main band. You know, still I have this uh, structure and like you know this hierarchy uh, uh, in what I'm doing. So. I'm more dedic- most dedicated to mayhem, but you know there are the other things which I really need on the side to balance it out. Uh, in my, my, I need that just like uh, I don't know how to put it uh, for my soul, for my artistic uh, approach. I really need different stuff. But anyway, we have the diamond. A promotional tour still going on. We just finished Europe and we just finished Russia, which was fucking cool. We even played in Siberia. It was amazing. I've never been there, so we had a couple of uh, new territories, and now um, we're gonna go to USA in March uh, with Mayhem, like a whole US tour. We're gonna headline the Decibel Festival, and then we're gonna do festivals and another European run in September, October. And then we probably finish the whole world, like Asia, Australia, after then South America. So we gonna be very busy with Mayhem this year. So that's why I don't have so much of the other stuff going on. But I love to play with Hia Delem, what you seen tonight with uh, with Balaj. So we have a few shows of that. And I'm gonna have a few shows of Tormentor, of course, which like kind of like a very funny thing to do. So... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be very busy this year, and then we will see. I'm never gonna stop. No, no. It's gonna be very, I don't very have interesting. Pa- I don't to have a plan B. I just a, just a quick uh, question about Tormentor. Are you gonna release a new album with Tormentor? You think? Uh, we are, we are, yeah, we are thinking about it, but it's not easy, you know. Like we actually, I think, like you know, this album Anno Domini. We talked about it earlier. That was. Uh, That was very important, apparently, for the scene. It's from the same year as Death Crush, you know? So, and I think uh, we should, I mean, we just had like maybe 10, 15 shows. I think that album would deserve a little bit more of shows, but we are so old now and everybody has their family, their personal life. So we just can't go on like a month European tour. It's not possible with that band. So we are just doing these selected shows and festivals, but I would like to keep going on with that. And then uh, we have new ideas. So I think we're gonna do, probably we do like an EP to start with, see where it goes, you know? Yeah. Not, nothing uh, set in concrete, but uh, you know, we are free to do whatever. I. I support the idea to do an EP to start with and see how it goes. Very cool. Thank, thank you. you so much, Attila. It was so fascinating talking to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I wish I so could have a more complete, you know, we are after the show. I'm a little bit exhausted. Yeah, yeah I understand. I understand. I wish we would not have to break, you know, and we could keep going on. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, thank you for your, uh, of course, your interest and your questions. And it was a great interview. Great talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much, guys. Heil black metal and heil the art of fucking dark and evil music. Thank you. <laughs>